Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's message. I want to start off today by letting you know we are now in the middle of the year, the middle of the year. And my usual question to you, what have you been doing with what God heard you told him? He heard you say to him, God, I will do so and so and so within 2016. Remember all year's night? Yeah, well, it's almost six months now. We are into the sixth month. What have you been doing? I'm decreeing to you. You are not a promise breaker. You are a promise keeper. I am decreeing to you. You make vows and you keep them. As uh, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, you make a vow. You make a promise to God. Make sure you pay it because you do not want your mouth to make you a liar. Amen? In fact, right now I want to anoint my hands at the beginning of this session and release a finisher's anointing on you. In fact, some people have to release a starter's anointing and then the finisher's anointing. Amen. But I decree to you, by the 31st of December 2016, you will finish that which you have promised God. At least, if you're not finished, you will be well on your way to getting it done. Amen. And I'm also going to be praying for you who started and all hell broke loose against you. I'm here to declare to you, you shall rise again. Amen. Destiny anointing oil. Every time we come on the set, we have anointed our hands and we have major testimonies coming out of people who by faith released their faith for God to do what they asked of him to do and what he had to do for them. Anytime you come to where we are, whether it's in Diego Martin or in any of the branches, or anytime you come to speak in your vicinity, this is available. So let me anoint my hands. So I'm stretching my hands forth for those who made the promise and never started. Those who started and got discouraged. And those who started and other people broke your will, broke your stride and you just stopped. I'm releasing the same prayer. Oh, breath of God that came in that valley when Ezekiel prophesied to the dry bones and the bones came alive. Breathe upon your people right now. Breathe upon that young man right now. Breathe upon that husband. Breathe upon that wife. Breathe upon uh, that son, that daughter. Breathe upon that preacher. Breathe upon whoever made the promise. And let bone come to bone. Let ideas that have been separate come together. And let the journey begin. Now, I release a finisher's anointing upon you. And for those who never started, I release a starter's anointing. Yes, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher. What he started, he finished. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. And if there's need for healing in the body of anybody who is uh, viewing us right now, receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In fact, in fact I, I got some disturbing news this week. A little 10-year-old girl is taking chemotherapy for ovarian cancer. What is a 10-year-old doing with ovarian cancer? I'm telling you, cancer is like a demon. And I'm here to prophesy to whoever right now is having 
a, a, a battle with cancer. I prophesy healing right now. I curse the thing at the root. I take the axe of the word and I lay it at the root of cancer. And what the doctor and all the chemotherapy and other things cannot do, I prophesy the word of God advances your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive it. Amen and amen. Good morning. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan. On behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, I welcome you to It's Your Date with Destiny. I guarantee you, if you believe what you see on this program, your life will never be the same. Again, and that's not a cliche. That is the truth. Hallelujah. Today, I want to bring a, a, an excerpt for you of the service we had last week, Sunday. Listen to me. Last Sunday, we were in heaven's atmosphere. When the worship reached the point where I come to, came to take over, the song that was being sung, it, it, the song said that let the breath of God breathe on me. Let the breath of God breathe on me. So I came up and began to exhort on Genesis 1, verse 26, which says, God said, let us make man. Verse 27, God said, he made man, and he made man in his image and likeness. And we found out quite down in John chapter 4, verse 24, I think it is, it says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now the thing about it is that we were made in the image and likeness of God, therefore we were made for spirit. But then God had to make a body for us. I want you to follow the teaching that we did last Sunday and then look at the impact that it had upon all of us for the entire service. We were glued to the breath of God. Many got their healings, deliverances. I mean, it's just off the chain. What I would advise you is if at all you get up a Sunday morning or a Friday night and God says, go to Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin or in any of the branches on a Sunday. Don't fight the feeling. Come, because we and all don't know what God will do. And we don't want somebody to be telling you about it because words cannot describe what happened last Sunday. While you're on the air, call 633-3780. And somebody will minister to you in the name of Jesus. Genesis 1 first. Although we know it by heart, I hope. Let's get to verse 26. Genesis 1, verse 26. This is a uh, uh, creation week that's being described here. And uh, God has done everything else in terms of the, uh, the creation process. And now he says, let's make man. He's about to make man. And the Godhead, Elohim, which is the first word we know for God, means God, the, plur the plurality, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So in the beginning, Elohim. When you hear El by itself, is the Father. When you hear Elohim, is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Is that understood? Amen. Amen. And then in, in the next verse, you see three of them work. You see, it says, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and God said. So, and El launched his son, Jesus, because said means he spoke words. He spoke words, and in John 1, the, 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 the son is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with 
God and the word was God. And then that word became flesh. Right, so that was the son. And then we read where, and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the water. So all three of them were functioning uh, from the very beginning. And in verse 26, the father, El, said to the rest, the team came up with this, I mean, magnificent plan. Tell your neighbor, you are a magnificent being. Sometimes you dread, but you are the most magnificent being. Sometimes you're missing it, but you're the most magnificent being. Sometimes you are real stressed, but you are the most magnificent being. Hallelujah, that God has made in the earth. You're so complex, you and all don't understand yourself. Tell anybody that for me. You're so complex. You and all don't understand yourself. You're real trying, eh? You're real trying. So, 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 so tell your neighbor, if you don't even understand yourself, you think you could understand me? Eh? Right, so don't, don't, hurt your head. don't hurt your head concerning me at all. Ay, ay, ay. I am fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made, and that my soul knows well. My hands, my, my, the hands of my God made my hands, made my ears, made my eyes, made everything. Hallelujah. And this is so important. And God said, let us make man. Tell your neighbor, you are a col collaborative effort. Hallelujah. That's why you need to collaborate with the one who made the effort. Hallelujah. Yes. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Tell your neighbor, when I see you, I get a picture of what God is. Hallelujah. 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 And let them, let them, let man, them, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and so on. And then comes to verse 27. So God created man. So God made a plan and God executed the plan. Therefore, if we are in God's images, image and likeness, tell your neighbor, you cannot leave things unfinished. You leave things unfinished. Whatever you're doing, you have to finish it. Amen. Amen. And somebody put your right hand up and say, I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. Hallelujah. And then declare this, every loose end in my life, I'm going to plait it into a very pretty carpet and cover myself with it. It's the glory of God. Amen. Nothing loose anymore. As nothing loose, I'm going to... I say I'm going to grab it out of the air and fix it up. Hallelujah. So verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. Verse 28 says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, and so on and so on, be fruitful and so on. Now, up to this stage, man is spirit. Man is what? Because the image and likeness of God is spirit. As we learned from uh, Jesus speaking to the woman at the well, uh, before that, uh, you, you could have said, uh, uh, it's, it's how you conceive God. But when Jesus spoke to the woman of the well, he said straight up, God is a what? Spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. In other words, he, he, he's, he's saying God told us to worship him and he did not give us a task for which we are not equipped. Huh? All right, let, let me flip the coin and give you the positive. He gave us a task for which he has already equipped us. Therefore, it's not impossible. Why? Because if he's a spirit, and we are in his image and likeness. He, we also are spirit. Therefore, he demands that we worship him in spirit. But I want you to see something just now. So this is, this, is, this is God making man in his image and likeness. Spirit. Go to chapter 2 for me now. Genesis 2. Go to Genesis 2. Because God gives man who is spirit dominion over the earth which is material earth is what material earth is made up of things but man is given a mandate to run things but man is spirit spirit and things do mesh spirit and things are different from each other so here is God with man in the earth, having given him a mandate to run things, but man is spirit. 
So there is a quandary because spirit is not in touch with things. Therefore, God needs now to find a way to bring man and the thing that he has to rule on the same page. So go down to verse 7 of chapter 2. Let's read. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the what? breath of life. And the man became a, oh my God. So man, spirit, which is spirit, is set to rule earth, which is things. And spirit and things don't mesh. Therefore, God had to find a middle line. God had to find a what? Middle a middle line that could pull both spirit and things together and here is where because we're singing come live in me come breathe in me come live in me and, and we do we if we really understand as if we really understand what we're singing by all now so we're running around this building because as i told you already we're going beyond the song we want to live the song amen, amen. but you cannot live what you don't understand amen and i think uh, I'll take a, 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 after this, I'll go take a seed, understanding seed. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. And, and, and he formed man out of the dust of the ground. May I tell you, everything that you could touch, everything you could touch, everything you could feel, even the gold earring on your ears, Mary, that is dust. <laughs> that is dust. Everything you could touch, Everything you could see with the natural eyes is made up of dust. If you leave it long enough, it will return to uh, dust. So it's important to know that all the nice Coca-Cola shape you have, and even if it's a gelita, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and at some point in time, it's going to return to uh, the dust. Now, now, now watch this. Man is formed, but man has no life. That's the flesh man. The body has no life because the real life of man is his spirit. Is his what? Spirit. spirit. So here is man alive as spirit. But here is man lifeless. I can't say dead because he was never alive up to that point. So here is man alive as spirit. Here is man Lying down as flesh. Flesh can rise without spirit. Call man. As soon as he does that, the spirit goes in, the body rises up because now the spirit gives life to, life to the body. But there is another thing introduced here. It says that man became a living, a living what? A living soul. Absolutely important that you understand that. Because it's your soul that keeps you in touch with the world. Why? Because your soul is the seat of your emotions. The seat of your what? Emotion. Very, very important that you understand that. So you do not let anybody tell you you're too emotional. Amen. If you try to scale down your emotions, you are telling God you made a big mistake. Making me able to touch things in the world and feel happy. Amen. And feel sad. Lord, they're trying to make me a robot. What do you want? Have it. Yes. And they give me a hundred thousand dollars and I'm, thank you. <laughs> Hello. If you got a hundred thousand dollars, had to have some kind of emotion inside it. Eh? God watches that dead body, that lifeless body on the ground. God watches that lifeless body. God watches your body today as well. God watches you. 
as well. And he said, I have a breath for you. I got something inside of me that I want to put inside of you. Parabashana. To change the whole rhythm. To change the whole function. To change the atmosphere around you. Because I dare say to you, when the bread of God is in you, the very atmosphere around you has to respond to the emotions that rise, rise up inside of you. Karabashanda. Oh, Yarabashondo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, well, I'm making you able to feel. I'm making you able to see. I'm making you able to touch. I'm making you able to speak. I'm making you able to breathe. I'm making you able to walk. And whatever, whatever you feel on the inside, he say, I constructed you to feel that. He says, so when you tell me, come breathe in me, he said, just like I did with Adam, I got a whole ton of breath to blow inside of you. But he said, can you handle me breathing afresh? Can you handle me breathing a fresh breath into you? It will accentuate your emotions. You'll become like David. One thing I desire, that's emotions. And that I'll seek after. That I will dwell in the presence of God. That I'll find myself in the presence of God. That I'll get into the house of God. That I'll live where God is. And wherever he is, uh, there is fullness of joy. Jesus. Jesus. Rukadabashanda. Rukadabashata. David told himself one day, he said, I'm seeing, I'm seeing negative emotions in you. And it's dominating the one that God wants. So he says, Saul, why are you cast down? Somebody talk to your soul this morning. Talk to your soul. Why are you worried? Soul, why, why, why are you feeling so put off? There is a breath. There is a breath. There is a breath available. God is breathing. Yebo shatai. And David said, you know what? David said, soul, praise him. Soul, worship him. I said, come breathing right up here. God is breathing. I don't have to blow through this mic. Rabba Shah, the breath of God is his presence. Breathe, feel disquieted. I may feel nervous and anxious, but I know misaligned, disaligned back today gotta go go, 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 go yeah, see yourself rising off that ground get all excited Get all happy in God. Get all re today is a different day. Stand up. Take the bread of God. Blow the bread of God. Receive it in your house, in Antigua, in Shawana, in San Grande. Over the road, multi-purpose. Don't stand. Receive it. I know all you are saying is awesome. Phenomenal. What a move of God. What awesomeness of God's presence. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm I, I, talking about it right now and I'm feeling that same fire. And I decree that same fire that was upon us on Sunday gone, I release it to you. Yeah, take it, take it, take everything you could get. I breathe on you. 
I say, on God's behalf, I breathe on you. And everything that's dead in your life, everything that's lifeless, it shall arise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why not visit us this Sunday at Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin? Yes, this Sunday, the 5th of June, 2016. If you cannot come to Diego Martin, go to the branches. They get it via live stream. Let me tell you something. The, the folks in Antigua, hundreds of miles away, even thousands, from here, when that anointing was being released last Sunday, they were getting the deliverance up there. Somebody wrote me from New York, and he said, that anointing came through the screen of the computer via live stream and just blew them away. What awesome change will take place, impact there will be, if you come live and direct to the service. I, I, I can't explain that to you. Amen? So we're looking forward to you coming this Sunday, this Sunday, the 5th of June 2016, to headquarters here in Diego Martin or in any of the branches. Make sure you come expectant. Amen? Good. Uh, this week, we have our radio programs. We have three radio programs every week, and we give God praise and thanks for that that we can actually pay for it. And we never appeal for people to help us with our television programs and our radio programs, but today I just feel led. If you've been blessed by our programs, and let me not use if, since you've been blessed by our programs, this television program and our radio programs, we implore you to plant a seed in Divine Destiny Worship Center because there's a rule in the spirit. If you want to draw on the anointing to which you are exposed, one of the sure ways is to plant a monetary seed because money is a connector to anointings. Amen? So our first program is on Monday at 9 p.m. on 98.1. It's called it's your date with destiny. Our second program for the week is on Tuesday on 107.1, The Word. And it's at 9.30 p.m. on Tuesday, 107.1, The Word. And on Fridays, every Friday, this Friday included, at 3 p.m. on 98.1, Ask Pastor Gemma. Powerful, powerful word from God. And for a long time, we have not highlighted our book of the month. And for this month, we're going to highlight I Am an Able Man, a book that I wrote for which you need to get a copy, especially for Father's Day, or as we say in Divine Destiny, Men's Day, coming up on the 19th of this month. Give your father a book. Give the person you see father as father in your life a book. Give your big brother a book, your little brother a book, and let that book be, I am an able man. So until we meet again, on behalf of my wife, Pastor Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, this is Apostle Vivian Duncan saying to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a God idea. Because when God made you, he had a destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. Amen. As you continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ, this has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.